Good day everybody and welcome once again to the Purbul Academy channel. Um, you know, I, I, I found out that sometimes some of the older videos don't really get watched anymore. People are a little bit lazy, you know, they, they open up the channel and the first video that's there, they watch. So uh, I made a video a long time ago about puppies and tail docking, and, but it was a very short video. And I know it's always a controversial subject, and that's why I decided to, to again address it. Now, tail docking in burbles is something that used to happen in the past, and now it is frowned upon in modern society. There are, however, many, many stories about it. And I read things on, on or I see a video the other day of this guy in a heavy accent explaining that, oh yeah, you must cut off the tail of your dog because it's got the baboons are going to grab it and, 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 and then you have problems. I don't think the guy ever saw a baboon. Right, and I don't think, uh, uh, I think if you dug around on that channel, you will always find, uh, also find stories about lions and burbles and I don't know, all those types of stories. Let's get back to reality. Right. Reality is, burbles are born with tails. If they aren't born with a tail, if they have a natural dock, we see it as a spinal defect and the dog has to be disqualified. Right? Because normally, if you look at it, with that natural dock, there is a defect. There is a spinal defect. Okay. Now, I'm lucky. I've got another litter of puppies. Uh, my second in, a, in, in not such a very long time. I've only got six dogs. So for me, it's magic. And... Uh, and the female that had these puppies, I battled for a very long time with her. Uh, but no, she's, she seems to have gone over all her madness. You know, she was one of those crazy dogs that she would have puppies and she would just simply lick them out of the pen and, and she would be jumping like a bloody rabbit when she's got the puppies. So it seems that she's calmed down. She's a little bit more mature and this. Okay, right. Now, first, let's look at, at, at tail docking. The very first thing you've got to consider is if you're thinking of docking a tail. If you're not thinking of docking it, it's easy. You just leave it. You ignore what I'm saying. Right. If you are thinking of docking the tail, first of all, find out, is it legal where I am? In certain countries, it's legal. In some other countries, it's illegal. So if it's illegal, don't do it. Right. If it's legal and you are thinking to consider it, now, okay, wait, let's just get back to legal. Legal doesn't mean if it is banned, for instance, for vets, or it is a, a, a practice which is, uh, which, is, which is frowned upon for veterinary surgeons to do, because somebody in their committee decided that, that, it's, not a, that it's a bad thing to do. Right. Um, legal means it stands in the law that you are not allowed to dock the tail of a dog. If it stands, if it is in the law that you are not allowed to unnecessarily torture or, or give pain to an animal, then it's another thing. It does not make tail docking illegally illegal because tail docking doesn't need to be painful. Remember, we've got two different types of, 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 of animals when they're born. You get those that go into the nest that, that are really poorly developed when they get born, like humans, like little monkeys, like little puppies. They, they are born not fully developed right compared to the others the gazelles and everything that at the moment they are born they can get out they can jump up and they can run to run away from the lions the, those that can do that are born with fully developed nervous systems the ones that can't do the jumping and the running and that are like weak little babies lying in a bed they don't have a fully developed nervous system when they get born now, if we look at a puppy, now I'm just going to take a puppy here. When a puppy is this age, now this one is three days old, right? It's its third day in life. Now, if you look at this puppy, everything is there, but it's got very poor motor control. And it's got virtually no nervous system, nerves development in all its peripherals. In all, that means the tips, the feet. Of the, the, the tips of the feet, uh, the paws itself, the tail, all of that. There is very little nervous development there. This puppy can't coordinate its legs. 
If you look at it, 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 it there, there, there's no way it can coordinate its legs. There's no nervous nervous system development in the legs yet, right? So if there's no nervous system, there is also no pain receptors, right? So now we're going to use a couple of puppies today. Now that's the first thing. So let's see if it's legal. So if it's if the law describes that you shouldn't hurt an animal, I fully agree with that law. Right. But if you dock the tails, you're not going to hurt the animal. Now I, I see there's a new theory where the people say, oh, but you're psychologically hurting the animal. Man, okay, and my uncle was my auntie. Right. So if 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 you really think that you're psychologically going to hurt an animal or damage an animal because it can't wag its tail because it hasn't got a tail hmm. then tell me the, the the natural bobs are they unhappy animals and they must now be go for for psychology because they psychological treatment because they're unhappy animals no i see dogs with long tails dogs with short tails i've got a little yorkie that lives here with us and the yorkie it's got a little curly tail and it can hardly wag it or swing it. It's ultra mobile. That dog can jump and turn on a tiki, but it doesn't use its tail to help it to jump and to turn or whatever. Its tail is a little curl sitting up on its back. Right. So don't tell me they need it to express their, their feelings. Right. I see dogs with short tails wagging them just as well as a dog with a long tail wagging its tail. My main concern, and the reason why I still believe that I like to dock tails, is because of injury. Burbles have a condition uh, which is not talked about a lot. It's called happy tail. When they, they have no idea where their tails are. They'll walk past your cup of cups, or your tray of full of cups, coffee cups, coffee mugs, and they go, shoo, 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 and there goes all the cups. That's not my concern. Right. That's just something that, that happens because the dog's got a long tail. What happens is that same tail that goes like this all the time gets beaten against corners and against walls and it eventually forms an abscess. Now I'm going to insert a picture here in my video so you can see what the abscess on the tail end of a burbul looks like. Right Now this specific dog I also try to treat and the next picture will show you how I try to treat it. I even put plastic hair curlers all over the tail and taped them up so that it couldn't beat its tail anymore and I used disinfectants and everything I could on that tail. Eventually I had to have the tail amputated. When I had to have the tail amputated it was incredibly traumatic for that animal. That animal was used to a tail and now as an adult it had to get unused to having not a tail and because it was docked when she was an adult she had ghost pains in that that tail for the rest of her life she would bite it where the tail used to be right it is cruel to 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 dock the tail of an adult dog i believe it's cruel to dock the tail of a puppy that the nervous system has started to develop into its peripherals it is cruel now, there's no getting past it. But if you do it early enough and for the right reasons, I believe it is it is valid. So what I do is I still dock tails. I still dock tails when they are very young because of the injury thing, right? The second injury that we see a lot is when burbles are playing. You'll find that the burble has got quite a robust tail at the base. It's quite thick. And then when it comes to the end, it just goes thin, right? And, and where that goes thin is normally the spot where if they jump up against each other and they get pushed back and they fall on that tail, it's not a kangaroo tail. Right? A kangaroo can support itself there. A burbul can't. If it falls back on that tail, the tail just goes snap. And have you ever seen an adult dog breaking its spine? Right? Because that is what's happening. The spinal column runs in that tail. Man, it is excruciating pain that that dog is going through. And again, it involves full anesthetic and an adult amputate, uh, amputation of the tail, which I don't want. I really don't need that in my life, right? So, let me first show you the equipment that we use. First of all, we use a, an applicator of Manda. The stuff is used, uh, the rubber bands that we use is also used to castrate sheep and goats and and things like that it's a it's a special plier now this one is incredibly old it's made of steel 
And nowadays they're all made of plastic and they don't come from Germany anymore. They come from Japan. Um, but what it essentially has, it's got four little tips. And, and the tips, when you pull the, the, the plier, the tips spread. They spread open, right. It's, it's, it's called a castrating ring applicator. So if you search on the internet, I know there are lots of them that are available. Now this one belonged to my grandfather. So they last a long time. Right? I don't know how many tales have been done with this one. Now what you do is, then you get a second product. It is the little rings. And this one is just called castrator rings. Castria ringer in Afrikaans. Okay, and you, I bought it from our, our co-op. Uh, the local co-op at it because they use it for sheep and for things like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do five puppies in a row. Just to show you how quick it is. That it's not hurting the puppies. There's no bleeding. There's no memory afterwards when the tail is gone. What happens is we put on the, the, the castrating ring when it's about three days old. And by the time the dog is about seven days old, even before the nervous system really develops into the peripherals, that tail is gone. It just dries out and falls off. Right. So what I do is let me pick a puppy. I'll take the same puppy. Right. Wee, wee, wee. Okay. Unfortunately, he woke up now. Because normally, when I put the, the, the castrating rings on, I open them up. I put the little tail through. I guess a distance. And I normally use my finger. I use my finger to position it. I go there and I pull it off. Now, guys, did you see this puppy going mad with pain or anything? There's the little ring. Puppy number one is done. Right? Just to show you that I didn't use magic or something to make that puppy uh, not cry, let me do another one. All right. That puppy is done. So this is a this is a procedure which is very quick. He has a nice, well pigmented little little fella. Right, a little bit smaller, so its tail is a little bit thinner. What I do is, even if the tails are, are quite thin, I will not put it on later. Oh, you, you crowd, you, 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 you got it right now. Oh, sorry, pie. Okay, right. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, sorry I woke you up. Okay, right, there we go. Let's do another one. And I want to show you, I'll, I'll do quickly do five puppies in a row. And you will see, this is not a big story, right? Okay, that one is now there. Let's take another nice one. Right, little tail. You see, I don't even have an assistant. Hey, sit still. Right, measure my distance well. There we go. Okay, you see? Hmm? No big pain. Hi. Okay, I'm putting you back now with mommy. Right, okay, another one. That was number three. Number four. Oh, this is, oh yeah. This is a little blondie in the pack. It's the one who's going to be very light fawn. Okay, now they're all woken up. Right. There's a little blondie. You see? Tough little girl. Not even, hey, cry baby. Shut up. Right. And the last one are the five. Just to show you that uh, this is a standard procedure. There's nine puppies in this litter. So I'm going to do the other four now. Hey, hold still your tail. I'm not mommy. You can't drink on me. Uh-uh. Done. Yeah, distance. Done. Okay. Right. Guys, that's tail docking of five puppies done. Do you see any, any blood? Do you see any... Damage to the dog, nothing. There is it in position, it is there. I woke them up now, so they're a little bit upset at me. But they're going back to mommy now. Okay. Right, guys, now watch that. What, there's no need for disinfection, nothing. Normally, after about four or five days, the little tail is, is all dried out. And you simply cut off the, the, the remaining part. Okay. So, guys, it's again, it's an ethical question. Do you tail dock or not? I do, because I don't want to see my dogs being amputated as adults. It's your choice. It's the legalities of your area which counts here. Now, I wrote two books. The one book is 
available in a hard copy, the second one not yet. Um, the first book is also available as an e-book. So let's stick to the first book for a start. The first book was called The History, The Origins and the History of the Burbu Breed. If you're interested in getting that book, send me an email to uh, burbulbook at gmail.com to order a hard copy, a printed copy. If you want to read the book, you can order it as an e-book as well. To order it as an e-book, you go to lulu.com, l-u-l-u.com. There's a couple of options on the landing page where they say, do you want to publish a book? Do you want to print a book? Do you want to do this, that, that? And you eventually get to a level where it says, I want to buy a book. Then you click on buy a book. Then the page opens with lots of pictures of books, front covers, outside covers of, of books, dust covers. And it says, uh, and there's a little search bar. In the search bar, just type in Burbul. The moment you type in Burbul, the book comes up. You pay through PayPal and your book uh, gets released to you in a, in a, in a PDF format uh, that's readable on your device. Right, so that's, that's the easiest way. The second book, I'm busy finalizing it. I'm busy doing the final language uh, uh, treatment of the book, uh, going through all the small checks. Uh, we've had the content checked so many times by so many experts. Uh, the book is massive. It's a 300-page book. I am going to print a couple of hard copies, and they will be very exclusive books. Uh, they will be signed, and they will be marked as a special collector's edition. Right, and uh, those books, you can contact me also on burbulbook at gmail.com, and I'll give you the details of that. Uh, in the background, you can see my nursery. Yeah, where we are in southern Mozambique. We grow a bit of plants just for uh, as a hobby and as an extra income. And behind that are my dog kennels. My dogs have got huge kennels and they, they're out most of the time. We have to lock them up when I do a video or when we've got guests in our guest house. Uh, but most of the time they just run free. They, they, they real farm dogs though. They encounter snakes, they see elephants, they, they live in the bush. So uh, I want to thank you again. Thank you for visiting my channel. And please, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you think there's something that you want to discuss or ask questions about, do so in the comments. I will get back to you. Uh, what I want to ask you is there's also a subscribe button. Click on subscribe. And right next to the subscribe button, there's a small little bell. Click on there. Then you'll get a notification and an alarm every time I release a new video. Okay. I thank you and... All of the best to you.